In a recent lesson, we proved the basic proportionality theorem for triangles, which states that if a line is drawn to intersect two sides of a triangle in two different points, and the line is parallel to the third side of the triangle, then that drawn line must cut the other two sides of the triangle in the same ratio. So in this diagram, that means the ratio of AD to DB is equal to the ratio of AE to EC. That's what it means for this segment to be cutting these sides in the same ratio. Now it turns out the converse of the basic proportionality theorem is also true, and that's what we'll be proving in today's Wrath of Math lesson. The converse of the theorem states that if a line is drawn to intersect two sides of a triangle in different points, such that it cuts the two sides in the same ratio, then the line is parallel to the third side of the triangle. So remember, with the basic proportionality theorem, we were given that these two sides were parallel, and the basic proportionality theorem tells us that as a result of that, this equality must be true. Now we are given this equality, so this line cuts these sides in the same ratio, and we want to prove that DE is parallel to BC. So this is our given information, and I just want to point out that saying the drawn line intersects the sides of the triangle in different points just means that our line doesn't look like that. This is a pretty straightforward proof, but the proof actually uses the basic proportionality theorem. So if you're not already very comfortable with that, I'll leave a link in the description and you can go check out the proof of the theorem. Now let's get into proving the converse. This is going to be a proof by contradiction. So we're going to suppose for the sake of contradiction that our desired result is not true, that DE is not parallel to BC. So I wrote that here. Suppose for the sake of contradiction, SFC, that DE is not parallel to BC. If the segment from the point D to the point E is not parallel to BC, then there must be some other point on AC, call it F, such that the segment from D to F is parallel to BC. So we draw this segment from D to that point F so that DF is parallel to BC. And we'll note that on the diagram with the little arrowhead like that on DF and a little arrow on BC. Now, since we have a segment intersecting two sides of a triangle in two different points, D and F, that is parallel to the third side, BC, we can use the basic proportionality theorem which, remember, tells us that this parallel segment, DF, must cut these sides in the same ratio, meaning that the ratio of AD to DB, AD to DB, is equal to the ratio of AF to FC, the ratio of AF to FC. However, recall our given information. We were given that this segment DE also cuts the sides of the triangle in the same ratio, which gave us this equality. We know that AD over DB is also equal to AE over EC. So we could add that on to the end of this equality. AD over DB is equal to AF over FC, but it's also equal to AE over EC. And again, remember that that piece of information was given. Now, since DF is parallel to BC, and we want to show that DE is parallel to BC, what we're really trying to do is show that DF and DE are actually the same line segments. We know that they both have an endpoint of D, so what we're really trying to do is show that F must actually be the same point as E. Because of that, this ratio in our string of equalities here is not super important or helpful with the point D. It's this equality that's going to be of interest to us. We would like to show that the point F must be the same as the point E, which would mean that the segment AF is actually the same as the segment AE. Of course, we don't know that's true yet, but what we do know is that AC is the same as AC. And using the point F, we could represent AC as AF plus FC. Using the segment AE, 
we could represent AC as AE plus EC. That might seem a little confusing without writing it all down. What we're really going to do here is add 1 to both sides of this equation. Certainly, we're allowed to do that. Now, if we want to bring both of these 1 terms into the fractions on their sides of the equality, we have to give them common denominators. So, we could write 1 as FC over FC. That way, it will have the same denominator as this fraction. On the right side of the equation, we could write 1 as EC over EC. That way, it will have the same denominator as that fraction. Then, of course, combining fractions on both sides of the equation, we have the AF plus FC divided by FC, that's the left side of the equation, must be equal to AE plus EC divided by EC, and that is our right side of the equation. Now, remember what I was saying earlier. These are two ways to represent the length of the same line segment. What is AF plus FC? Well, it must be the whole segment AC. Then what is AE plus EC? Well, AE plus EC, surely that's the whole segment AC. So we can replace both of these numerators with the same thing, AC. And so we have that AC over FC equals AC over EC. And now we're very close. Since we have a factor of AC in the numerators of both sides of the equation, we can divide both sides of the equation by AC to simplify it. So if we divide the part on the left by AC, we'll just be left with 1 over FC. On the right, we'll be left with 1 over EC. And again, all we did to get that was divide both sides of this equation by AC. In other words, we multiplied both sides of the equation by 1 over AC, and so those factors canceled out. Now, all we've got left is this very simple equation, and we are allowed to invert both sides of this equation. This is just raising both sides to the power of negative 1. Since they're both equal, their reciprocals must be equal as well. And so, doing that, we have that FC is equal to EC. Now, since these two segments have the same ending point of C, and since they fall on the same line, the only way the segments can have equal lengths is if they also start at the same point. Thus, F must actually equal E. So we have our grand conclusion that the point F is the same as the point E. This, of course, means that the segment DE is the same as DF. So since F and E are the same point, we'll write that big conclusion here. Since F and E are the same points, we know that the segment DF is equal to the segment DE. They are the same segments. Now, this is a little bit sloppy because we've been using this notation to mean that two segments have the same length, not necessarily that they're the exact same segments. But that's what we mean here. That's what we have proven. Since F and E are the same points, DF and DE are literally the same line segments. They fall on each other. They are the same. That means, of course, since DF is parallel to BC, and DF is the same as DE, we have that DE is in fact parallel to BC. This, of course, contradicts our assumption that DE was not parallel to BC, and we get our desired result. And that is how we prove the converse of the basic proportionality theorem. If a line is drawn to intersect two sides of a triangle in different points such that it cuts the two sides in the same ratio, then the line must be parallel to the third side of the triangle. Then, with this result combined with the basic proportionality theorem, we have that if a line is drawn to intersect two sides of a triangle in different points, then it will cut the two sides in the same ratio if and only if the line is parallel to the third side of the triangle. So given either piece of information, we can conclude the other. Parallel to the third side means it cuts the other two in the same ratio. If it cuts the other two in the same ratio, then it must be parallel to the third side.
So I hope this video helped you understand this fun little geometry proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description. Time.